Hi everybody, Kat here. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you tune in regularly. Today we're going to be painting a cute little pug dedicated to Anita Fox. I hope you're out there watching. <laughs> she says she likes, she's one of our viewers and she says that she likes pugs. So I'm going to paint this. I did a video doing this little guy. It was over an hour and a half long and I thought he looked a little bit too, I don't know. So I'm going to try and loosen him up and make it a little more, not quite beginner friendly, but almost beginner friendly. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to get a nice soft brush. Make sure it's nice clean water you're using. And I am going to go around the background very loosely with water. And I'm going to just touch the back of the top of my drawing. Um, I forgot to mention to you that I have included a drawing at the end of this video. There will be a drawing. And there's also, this is a, a picture a photo by from Unsplash. And I will also include the link to that. So the rest in here I'm not too worried about right now. I can do that later. I just want to make sure I get the nice top part of his head mostly. And I say he because some animals really do look male or female to me and this little guy looks looks like a male. Going by this, I'm trying to judge what color would be nice in the background and I think I'm going to choose some indigo because it's in the painting and I don't want it too too dark but I do want it to match this this little guy. So as long as I have enough water now, when you go along your already wet line, it should soften out so that your, your painting doesn't look superimposed on the paper. It's a little softer and it doesn't have to go right to the edge. I'm going to dip my brush into some water and I'm going to add some. Just very loosely come down. There's some beautiful holly that's drawn here on the bottom. You don't have to do that if you don't want. Just bringing this color down a little bit. Now I did not tape my work down because I'm on a small piece of Fabriano Artistico. Um, I know it's going to curl but it was I want I didn't want him to be any smaller than this so I'm tickling the edge of that blue and I'm just allowing it to bleed into his ears and his, the top of his head. And that's okay by me because I want him to just blend in with the background. I think that looks kind of nice. If you want to change something about it after you can, if you want to add a couple of water droplets for, for some interesting effect, you can do that too. Whatever you like. Now we're going to get going on him. I have a color by Holbein. It's W231. It's called Jaune Brian. And it is the closest to the natural, uh, like a blonde dog that I could get. I'm just removing a little bit of paint right there. Just, just like that. Pushing it up just came down a little too low but that's look I'm gonna leave it okay so I'm gonna take my jaune brillant so I'm gonna get a nice watery not too thick watery mixture there and I'm gonna go in with my a teeny bit of Van Dyke Brown just just so that it's not so peachy looking it's a little more now it looks a little more sandy looking I'm going to start up at the top and work my way down. And that's okay if it bleeds in. It really is okay. And I'm going to do a coat of this all over. The only thing I'm not going to do are his eyes. I did not mix enough of this shade, but it's not a huge deal. This is not a commission work or anything. This is just... A cute little pug. It's going to have the holiday holly on him. So you can use him 
as a Christmas card. He's not in very much light, so there's not a ton of highlights. If you notice, the light is on his left, so there's not many light highlights that I have to worry about, so I'm really not going to. So when you get him all filled in, I want you to give it a good drying off. If you're experienced, you can start laying in your mid-tones not your darks, your mid-tones, but without drying you can do that. But if you're not, draw your work first. Now I'm not, I don't, I'm not liking what's happening up here, so I'm just going to take my brush and add some water and remove it. And I have a tissue right next to me. Just going to pull it up. Okay, just going to go along there which is, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that color. My Jean Brillant and my brow. Just there. Perfect. So go dry that and we'll come right back. As you may notice, I did my painting on an angle. So I took the same drawing. So I'll show you briefly very quickly see he's straight here and so I just tilted my paper and I made his back come out this way so that he looks like he's looking at you sideways so in one hand I'm going to have a damp brush and on the other hand I'm going to have a brush with paint in it and it's not going to be a very big brush I'm going to use a size 4 silver black velvet and I'm going to start by putting in my mid-tones. So they're not lights. The lightest part of the dog is what I painted. So just to start, I'm going to go in and I'm going to wet his face. Not his snout, just his face. Nice clean water. And the reason you dry your work before you re-wet it again, it sounds funny, but if you don't dry it and you re-wet it, you'll, you'll leave cauliflowers, cauliflower marks, and you don't, it's not something that you necessarily want. So now I'm going in with this slightly brownier color. Make sure that you can see that. Yes, you can. It's very subtle, the, the variation, but it's, it's important. So I see that on, he has like a ridge on the side of his face here. To, that you can see his face is smaller than the whole width of him. Okay, and here too he has a bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of this color right where the ears would go, right here. They were going to be darker later. My paper is already drying, so I'm going to just add a little bit of water next to that so that it'll fan out a little bit okay and then he has markings in his face that are kind of like wrinkles so you want to go over those with this secondary color and you want to soften them so i'm going in with an even smaller brush because i don't want to go in with my large brush to soften these these edges Dampen your brush and just soften the edge so it comes out gradually. It gradually gets lighter. And if you feel like you've taken too much off, go back in again. And this is going to dry lighter. So you don't have to worry too, too much about if it looks too dark. And then he has kind of like eyebrows, painted on eyebrows. <laughs> So you want to add that slight variation here in color. So you see it's, it softens right out. I kind of lost this edge here. And this side, this side is completely dried. So I'm going to 
wet it again. Oh my god, he's adorable. Okay, so end down. Uh, I think I'm going to leave in the neck. I see that there's a, a variation in color here. But that is going to have to be darker later. Right. Now, on the ears, I'm going to wet each ear individually because my paper will not stay wet for very long. And I'm going to do those shadows. So you're drawing yourself a little map is actually what you're doing. So there's a very, where his ear kind of folds outward, it gets darker in here. And down here. And in here. I'm going to do this ear the same way. I'm just going to wet him. So it's the same thing. It's right where his ear tends to flip outward or inward. or and There's like a Y shape there, I see. So we're doing, like I said, we're doing the the pattern of where you see the shadows and they're just going to fade off with because your paper's wet and then you go in with a little bit more color after. Now you can go in right now with a darker color. You can do it. So if you want me to show you, I shall. So I just added a little bit more brown in there. And then it softens out beautifully. It's kind of milky. And I'm going to do this side as well. And as long as your paper is still wet, you can do this. If your paper is not wet, you can't do it. So I've rinsed my brush. I brushed the water, excess water off. And I'm just softening these lines here. Turn your work to make it easier for yourself. Just lost that white line there, so I'm just sopping up a bit of paint with the thirsty brush. Okay, now we have to leave these ears alone. As cute as they are. Okay, so I'm going to come in and do... The, I don't want to do the snout just yet because it's dark and I don't want it to bleed, so I'm going to do... Um, Actually, I'm going to blow dry and then I'm, I'll be right back. Okay, once again, we're going to re-wet. I would like to try to finish all the pale parts of his face because if we go in with a dark color, since I'm doing uh, a video and I can't wait for everything to dry, um, what's going to happen is it's going to bleed. And some bleeding is fun, but not too much. I'm going to wet up to his snout here again and around his eyes and since my paper is drying so quickly I'm going to put quite a bit of water on but you could lose some of your paint which I think is what's happening to me because it's so freshly painted and I'm rushing so again I'm going to go in with my size 4 this time I'm mixing up some burnt sienna and the original color of the dog, which is the Jean Brian. And I'm going to go over those lines again that we already did. And it's not only going to give them a bit of color, it's, they're going to start to take shape. I'm going to come around here. Try and go wherever you see some shadow. Yeah. I'm going to soften that. 
I've got a bit of a line there, so I'm just removing some of it. And some people paint in lines. They want every stroke to show, and, and that is a just a style, and I quite like it. Now for this part, this is like a fold in his skin. And then it almost folds over his, his snout. So we have to show that by adding deeper colors around it. So I am going to start doing his little, I think they're like eyebrows. So I want to make sure that they're damp. So when I put the, the, the uh, paint on, it's going to go where the water is. So for that color, I'm going to mix indigo. I'm going to mix some indigo and I'm going to mix some burnt sienna and it's going to make that's rather brown. But if you add more, if you add more burnt sienna, it's brown. If you add more indigo, it goes gray and then you chocolate brown, gray, and then black. You can go right to black with this color. It's like a homemade black. So I will drop some of that in right here. and it'll just soften out naturally. And I'm going to do the same over here. Start in the middle and see how far it spreads out so you know how far to go. If you start right on your pencil line, it's definitely going to bleed too far out. Excuse me, with a very small brush, I'm going to add a, a bead of water here and I'm going to add some of that color that we just mixed right there and it'll fan out and look rather natural. Now I think since I have it on my brush I'm going to do is eye outline like that. And like that just just for now I'm dampening my brush but the paint is still in it and I dabbed it off and I just want this to bleed because they have this this dog in particular has this color around his eyes and I'm going to wet my brush and and spread it out again. Just just so the, the paint goes where the water is. That takes off that rough edge. This too. Now you see how much lighter this dried? So sometimes things look dark to you and they're they're really not. So I'm gonna come in and do the dark part of his snout now. The first layer I'm going in with indigo and a bit of burnt sienna. Just a bit. And it's going to be quite watery. And you'll see it's like a gray color. See? And we're going to do the whole snout. I could have used a slightly bigger brush for this, but I didn't. Now, when I add some of this color down on the bottom of his chin, I want to poke downward with the point of my brush like that so that it doesn't look so even. It looks like it's furry. And while this is damp, I want to go in and outline that mouth, but I want it to be really dark. So I'm adding more. I'm adding a little bit of... Um, indigo and a little bit of that gray color that we made earlier so it's quite dark so it'll be almost black like that now wet the brush dab it off just going to come in here and soften that line. And my, because my paper dries so very fast these days, it's 
a little tricky to do what I just showed you. You just dampen your brush and you allow it to pull the paint towards it. So I'm just adding some water here because I want to go in with this dark color. And there's an indent in his chin like he has a little dimple. <laughs> it's like the cutest little thing. So for now we're going to leave that and see how that goes. Where his nostrils are, I'm going to take an even smaller brush. This is my size 2. I'm going to go in with even thicker, darker paint if it's possible. You can make this color as well. A lot of people use ultramarine blue, but ultramarine blue is a granulating color and so it separates on the paper when it's wet. And I often don't like uh, the look of it, it, it on certain paintings. Certain paintings it's great. So I'm going to paint his cute little nostrils. I need a bit more water than that. And here. And in watercolor, as you probably already know, there are very ugly stages in your in your artwork to go through because you paint in layers. Okay, so paint behind the nose quite dark because now you can see that that fold of skin, it makes it look like that fold of skin is coming forward. Just outlining the nose right now. I'm going to come down this area. This paint is quite liquidy. And I'm going to allow it to fade out with my damp brush. A bit more than damp actually. And I'm pushing the paint to where I want it to go. I want it to be a bit darker here. Try to really look at where the shadows are on, on his face. And this is darker over here too. So this is a bit more watery what I'm doing here. And I'm going to let this dry so that I can do the next layer and not worry about losing what I've built up here. Back to the forehead. I'm gonna, I'm, this time I'm going to wet the whole thing with a thin coat of the original color we used because I'm wetting it a little bit too soon, like a lot for freshly painted watercolor. I, I feel that I've lost a little bit of my my original color so I'm just putting some more down and I'm going to once again go over those those lines. So last time I used burnt sienna and the original color. So this time I'm going to use burnt sienna and a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. And I want it to be quite thin so I'm watering this down and my paper is almost already dry. It's crazy. I'm going to come down here and if you don't, if you feel that it should be softer, take a nice brush, wet it, Take it damp, just leave it damp and come by the side and soften those lines out. Just like that. Instead what I'm going to do is go over each part that I want to paint because my paper is really drying a lot. And that's more what I want. I want it to, to bleed out. And I have to do his little eyebrows. So I'm going in with a watery first, a watery wash of the first color. I'm going to add some of that watery burnt sienna mixture. And I think I'm going to have to come in around here with some darker browny color too. So I'm going to 
try and fix these ears. Not fix them, but you know, get right back into it. So there's something very dark here, like a shadow. And then the rest is very, very tiny. Just flick, 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 flick. Don't, don't, don't be too fussy about it. And this side as well. Just little tiny, like push your, push your brush like that. That's what I would have done here, except I'm, I can't move my work. <laughs> it's facing the wrong way. And I'm going to come in with some nice brown. I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to come in with this nice burnt sienna and a lot a bit more brown. I have to dry off my brush. It's too wet. So dry off your brush. Get some color. See it's kind of dry there? We're going to do a bit of dry brushing on the ears. Spread your brush out. And you're going to just go over these where the shadow is. Make some brush strokes. And on the snout, I'm going to just do some a bit more of that with some burnt sienna and the brown. And a bit of the, just a bit of that black we used. And if you feel like you have too much, go on another piece of paper to dot it off. And just dab it, just so it looks like little tiny hairs. shadow underneath that ear because his face is in shadow from his ear. I think we should do the eyeballs right now because he's going to come to life. So for his eyes I want to have burnt sienna and some indigo and I want them brown. I don't want them black. Just make the outline and I drew in the little um, highlight in his eye so that I wouldn't paint over it. If you, if you miss it, don't worry, you can use white paint to, to fix that later. And look at that, he's coming to life, isn't he? Now this side. And when you mix your own browns and stuff, they, they're really, really nice. You can buy some nice mixed browns, but when you make your own, they're really nice. Okay, so now that they're done, you can't really play with them too, too much, except to make his eyes look bulbous, you have to lighten some of the brown. So that's what I'm doing here with a damp brush, not a wet one. And right around here, his eyes are a bit lighter because the light is softly reflecting off them because they're so round. So we'll leave those alone right now. So around the snout, he has little um, hair wrinkles, you know, where his, where his fur grows out from. So with fairly thick paint, thick paint we're going to paint those in that. And then you're going to dampen your brush. You can go in with just a bit of watery gray or black and go underneath those. And you need to leave a highlight at the bottom so that it looks like his lip one part is folding over the next. Sometimes when you use a thin brush it doesn't have a lot of oomph to it because there's hardly any hairs on it. More water. 
just soften up my lines here. They're a bit wonky because I'm painting kind of backwards. <laughs> and right here I just want to make that darker again. And the mouth again. I'm going over that mouth again. Just softening this out. When you mix your own colors like this though, you do have to keep stirring them, mixing them up because they do settle and so the color will sometimes separate in in the the um, palette. So under here, soften that line out. And the same, I'm going to do the same over here. Wet this a bit more. Add a bit more color here and let it bleed out. There we go. He kind of looks like he's pouting. <laughs> so with a little bit more indigo in it. Can you go over his nose? And this note here. And it gives it a little bit of life. It doesn't look so gray and dull and boring. I'm going to take more black here. And let it just. There. And so that it doesn't look totally outlined, that's why you use, that's why you soften your strokes after. So it doesn't look like you used a marker. Okay, one more time in here. Wet. I'll add some more indigo to it. I like that. Like I said, it just adds a little bit of life to the color. And that's going to get, you're going to poke it in. Poke it downward. Back to the eye. I'm taking some magenta, just a teeny bit because it's in my palette. And I'm going to take a bit of my brown that I made. And you see that color we get? It's kind of like a pinky brownie. And that's what's in the eyes. So I'm going to put some here. Now we're going to splay our brush again, like this. And with these dark colors, we're going to go around the eyes. If you don't want to splay your brush, you could just use water and let the lines be soft. It's entirely up to you how you want to do your painting. I just like this look. It's easy. It's fast. It's not, I wouldn't do a whole dog this way. I don't like it, I like doing it that much, but for, for this purpose it's great. So then I'm going to go around his snout a little so it doesn't look so painted on, even though it is. It's just going to come around like that. Dabbing it in the driest part of my paint. I'm coming around here. Sometimes you have to add a bit of white to your paint after. So now with my original color, these are just like little final touches before I do anything else. And a bit of brown, teeny bit. I'm just going to make some subtle, subtle changes in the... You know what it is I don't like about this? Because this paint is kind of opaque. It's not transparent and that's what's giving me the trouble. Ha ha! Well, at least now I've figured it out. I'm going to wet that. I'm going to go back to my transparent paint here. I'm going to use a little bit of this raw sienna. Just to soften these, these up a bit. I don't quite like how they look. Yeah, that's what it needed, some raw sienna. Whoop, that's a bit too much raw sienna. OK, 
Okay, so just very gently work work your way around your your little folds in his skin. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm liking that better. I think that other paint is not entirely it's not entirely transparent and I really only like to use transparent colors. For time's sake, let's finish his eyes. I will speed through some of these steps as you probably already noticed, I've done it. Um, the steps I think you can do without any instruction. So we're coming around. Now on his eyeball, his eyeball is actually, you can see some of the lashes on his eyeball. <laughs> He's so cute. I'm gonna go around like that. Like that. And it's the same with this, this side. Just going to outline this eye. He has a darker rim. Just making a deeper brown where I feel it needs to be. I'm going to add in with very dark paint, with our blacks that we mix, I'm going to add in some little cute little eyebrows. So it's not watery. It's in between water and milk. It's not too, too, and your brush has to be dried off on the ferrule. Okay. I'm going to come down here and do some down here too. We could fix up the ears too. We can add a bit more shadow here. Let it bleed out, soften. And some right here. Okay, so now we're gonna get to these. I'm going in with some sap green. You only paint half at a time. That's the secret to painting these really well. It's so much easier. And then with your, I went with hooker's green. I'm going to go down the center and just go around near the edges. Doesn't have to be right down to them. It's just to give them a bit of, of shape. Now I'm going to do some red berries so you see how they're done. I'm, I'm going to mix my pyrrole red with a little bit of alizarin crimson. Just going around the berries. I'm going to leave a little highlight there. If you don't leave it, you just paint it on. Don't worry with white paint. sometimes when we're doing things we forget or we paint over somewhere we didn't intend. And now these berries. I'm going to take a dab of the hunter green and add it in just for a shadow color. Coming around on the right side because before I determined that the light was kind of on the left side of the dog. Not that it played much of a role in our painting today, but I am putting some shadows on these berries. If you like for interest, I would go over again one more time. This I would go over this snout with the blue because I do find it adds something to the painting. Make sure your under layers are dry.
Now I'm going to do the other half of the holly the same way. And I'm going to leave a little white space, just a tiny bit of a white space. You don't have to, but that's how I do my holly. I really hope you're enjoying uh, this video. He's, um, this was Anita was looking at my interlude <laughs> uh, video and I, where I show some of my work and she said that she likes pugs. She liked my dogs and she likes pugs. Hint, hint, wink, wink, I guess. <laughs> and so I decided to paint a pug. And I did paint that other one like I showed you before, but I I didn't really like the video and I was I was a little bit I don't know, I was a little tired when I did that video and sometimes sometimes that affects the way you you interact. It's it's because you're not really I'm talking to you, but you're not here. I wish I was in your living room sometimes and we could be painting together. Now, the final thing you can do is you can paint some white highlights on them. And I think that that's what I'm going to do, simply because he's he's quite a pale dog. And the background, I didn't quite go dark enough to highlight how pale he is. So I am going to use a little bit of white on him. You don't have to do this, as I said. So here I found I lost a little bit of his white here. And then at the very tops of his head, he's kind of he's kind of got some highlights here. And then down this side of his ear. I find that a little much, but we'll see if, how it looks when it dries. I'll decide I'll decide when it dries and I walk away. That's really what you need to do sometimes, is walk away, stop touching your work, and see how it looks. I don't know, you decide. What do you like better? This little guy or this little guy? Can you see both? Well, they look awfully the same, don't they? <laughs> you know, they say, people say, I, I'm really, I need to find my style. Well, I think I found mine. That my, they look almost identical and I was really trying to go a lot looser with this one <laughs> but it didn't work but anyway I, I kind of like them both I think what I would do is I would fill in his body a little bit more and uh, but that's about it I kind of like him I think he's cute and I think I would take away some of this white hair I don't don't it's too white I don't like it and that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. And uh, I love all your comments, guys, so keep them coming. Happy watercoloring. Bye-bye.